And in the time of Duhem's work, uh, he, he encountered a lot of opposition in that. Is that correct? Uh, right. Uh, the, 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 well, I, I believe scientists today still are, are taught that, uh, that um, science is, uh, that, uh, that there is a scientific revolution. The scientific revolution is, uh, occurs in the 16th or 17th century. Uh, Duhem believed that that was a polemic directed against the Catholic Church. Uh, that when one teaches scientific revolution, what one says, what one gives is a story um, which begins with, uh, in, in Greece, uh, the, 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 the twilight of, of science, meaning uh, begins in a pagan context. Um, and then there is no science. It's snuffed out. Uh, there is no, uh, nothing worthy of the name science in the Middle Ages, the time of hegemony uh, for the Catholic Church. Uh, thus, when somebody says science was born in the 17th century, for Duhem, what it means is that there is an inevitable, it is a thesis of an inevitable conflict between science and religion. That in order for science to be born, what one, one has says is, is the ascendancy of humanism. Uh, and that was a thesis Duhem particularly disliked, uh, which is why he was so uh, pleased for, uh, to discover the continuity of 14th century and 17th century science, of course, through the 15th and 16th, which indicated that, in fact, there is no necessity, no historical thesis of conflict between, it isn't between religion and science. It isn't as if when the Catholic Church is powerful, there is no science. When it becomes less powerful, science is born. That, that, that is, so, so Duhem's continuity thesis in his own mind had uh, uh, important overtones about the relationship between science and religion. Uh, in his own mind, he was refuting the predominant view which said that uh, science has to be um, uh, anti-religious, mm -hmm. that there's a conflict between religion and science. Uh, so, so he, as a believing Catholic, um, in an establishment, a, a fairly anti-religious establishment, a scientific establishment at the turn of the century in France, uh, wanted uh, to display, well, was grateful to find the evidence to display the falsity of this thesis, this historical thesis of the warfare between science and religion. Uh, and of course, he was, in his uh, philosophical work, he was happy to show uh, that there is no necessity of conflict between science and religion as well. Um, and. Uh, I think that uh, Reverend Stanley Yockey also has uh, become a very great admirer of Pierre Duhem. And he's written a biography of Duhem. Yes. And, uh, he's, and also of Helene, his daughter. Yes. And I think that they were, uh, even, even though Duhem thought that he had refuted uh, this contrary opinion about the Catholic Church's uh, bad uh, influence on science, uh, many other people didn't really accept his refutation. Is that, is that correct? That, that is correct. Uh, the, the, though Duhem's work in the history of science was well received uh, and uh, fairly well discussed, uh, received and well discussed enough that uh, the work was published as late as uh, the 1950s. Uh, the Système du Monde volumes uh, six through nine uh, were published in circa 51 to 59. Um, it's still uh, true um, that revolution uh, and the scientific revolution uh, is, is um, the predominant historiography of science. Uh, it became the predominant historiography of science in spite of Duhem's arguments. Part of, of that can be explained uh, by uh, a shift from uh, thinking about the relationship between theories in science from, let's say, the late medieval to the early modern period, to an emphasis on differing methodologies in science from the medieval to early modern period. So that, in fact, uh, historians and philosophers of science began thinking that uh, the change in methodology of science was more significant than the continuity of theories of science so that they could even accept Duhem's work and, and yet claim a, a revolutionary break. Oh, um, okay. So, so it, it's a, a very interesting and nuanced picture, which is because, it, in fact, the methodology of the, the philosophy of science uh, and the historiography for, sci for the history of science 
became more um, discontinuous in uh, uh, the, the, the 50s and 60s. Uh, thus, um, Duhem's results could have been subsumed and still rejected at a certain level. Um, Stanley Yockey's book uh, is, is an interesting book. Uh, it, it's, uh, what is it? It's called Uneasy Genius. Uh, it's an mm -hmm. interesting title. Um, it, it, there is a fair amount of work on Duhem uh, in uh, the uh, 80s and 90s. Uh, uh, Yaki wrote uh, the, the uh, mm -hmm. intellectual um, uh, biography of Duhem and also lately of, of his daughter, Helene. Mm -hmm. um, th there are other thinkers who have been uh, working, uh, 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 who have been working to, to exhibit Duhem's thought fully. Um, there is a, a Scotsman uh, named Neil Martin who has written uh, uh, an intellectual biography of Duhem. I believe the title is uh, um, the, the Life of a Believing Physicist, or the, the Life and Times of a, of a Believing, Pierre Duhem, The Life mm -hmm. and Times of, of a Believing P Physicist. There's, there are a number of people in France as well, who, uh, uh, a fellow named Anastasios Brenner, who has written a book on Duhem, and uh, 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 a fellow who teaches at Bordeaux, the uh, university where Duhem teaches, uh, named Bruzong, uh, who wrote a very interesting uh, intellectual biography on, Ju on Duhem, based um, uh, in large part on the Duhem's correspondence, which is now available at, I believe, at the Académie des Sciences. Um, so the, the, the Duhem, Duhem has been, uh, has had, I suppose, fashions, uh, uh, and uh, is, is uh, currently uh, well studied. Uh, the, f the French have re-released uh, his main works, uh, uh, the aim and structure of physical theory, and uh, to say the phenomena, which are his main uh, philosophical work, uh, historiographical works, uh, in new editions uh, just lately, but with the, uh, the publisher being uh, uh, the Librairie Philosophique v uh, Jean, uh, G. Vrain, which is uh, possibly the, the, the most illustrious uh, philosophy publisher in France. Uh, so the Duhem is not uh, unknown. Um, and, and he's actually quite well known uh, uh, on this side of the world as well. Um, That's very good. And, and of course, you have you're also uh, written a few books on Duhem, right? And mm -hmm. actually, translations of his work. Yes, I, I do my part. Uh, and that, in fact, is is, a, is a, an etching based on a photograph of Duhem at 55, uh, which is uh, uh, part of the cover. Th this this work uh, is uh, the only copy present. Uh, it's hot off the press. Uh, it is a, a, a selection, a translation of essays of Duhem's on the history of science and the philosophy of science. Um, I, I, the publisher is, is uh, Hackett of Indianapolis, a very fine publisher of basic philosophical texts. Uh, prior to uh, this translation, um, I had, uh, as I refer, mentioned, uh, I, I had uh, translated uh, uh, sections from the main historical work on medieval philosophy, the Système du Monde. Um, so so uh, Duhem is now available in English. His other, uh, I should take credit for all of, uh, uh, of all, all of translations uh, into English of Duhem's. Uh, there, the, uh, I should also mention that I have a co-translator, uh, Peter Barker, who is a, a professor of history science at the University of Oklahoma. Uh, at Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, but th the other important works of Duhem, uh, philosophical works, uh, have been and, and are still available. Uh, Princeton University Press uh, has a translation of Duhem's main philosophical work called The Aim and Structure of Physical Theory. And it has just lately re-released a, a new edition of it with a, with a new introduction. And uh, uh, I mean, so, so obviously it's a book that, that sells. Um, and the University of Chica Chicago Press has a translation of To Save the Phenomena, one of Duhem's historiographical pieces, concentrating on the question of uh, the relationship between Galileo and the church. Uh, 